Hello and welcome to St Paulinus Church here in Ollerton, one of three Church of England churches in our town. At the moment in church we're looking forward to a special season of the year called Lent. But what does that mean and when does it begin? Well I'm going to explain everything. Follow me. You may be wondering why I've come here to the church's kitchen to start off. Well, the day before Lent is also a special day. In lots of countries it's called Mardi Gras or Fats Tuesday. In Britain we call it Pancake Day. I've got my pancake here already, I'm going to put a bit of lemon on it, lemon on it ready to eat. Christians give things up often during Lent. They might give up chocolate or coffee or meat, or they might just give up rich foods. And in the old days when people did that, they had to find some way to use up all the eggs so they wouldn't be wasted because they wouldn't need them during Lent itself. So they invented Pancake Day. Mmm, that is absolutely delicious. Christians have another name for this day. They call it Shrove Tuesday. People used to like to think about all the things that they'd done wrong that had separated from God over the past year and ask his forgiveness on this day. They were given forgiveness and that was called being shriven. It's a funny word, isn't it? And so they called today Shrove Tuesday to remember it's the day when they are shriven. The day after is the first day of Lent and that's called Ash Wednesday. Why do we call it that? Well, follow me into church and we'll find out. On Ash Wednesday, we begin the season of Lent. But what is that all about? Well, imagine you've got a friend that you don't know terribly well. You play with them a little bit sometimes and they're around and it's good to have them there. But as you get to know them, you think, I'd like to know them better. I'd like them to be one of my best friends. So you make a bit more of an effort. You try and do some of the things that they'd like to do. You try and talk to them a bit more. And gradually, they become one of your closest friends. Well, that's the idea behind Lent. Christians want to get closer to God. So they spend the next 40 days trying to do things that God would want to do so that they get closer to him and they understand him better. Some people do give things up. Other people take up something new that they do. They might read a special Lent book, like this one. Or they might get a special Lent app on their phone and every day read a little bit about God's love for them. In churches there are lots of crosses decorating the building. This is the biggest one in our church and it's right at the front where everyone can see it. The cross is important because Christians believe that Jesus died on the cross and that was a big part of what he came to do, to die on our behalf. So in Lent we think a lot about that. In fact at the very end of Lent, on Palm Sunday, everybody's given a palm cross which they take home to remind them of that all the year round. This is my cross from last year. Every year, church leaders burn some of the old crosses that aren't needed anymore to make ashes, which they use in the service on Ash Wednesday. So I'm going to burn this one now. Now that we've burnt our crosses, they've turned into ash, and we use that ash in our Ash Wednesday service. Christians come to church, and at part of the service, they come and stand at the front, and the minister who's leading the service puts a sign on their forehead painting it on with the ash that we've made. The sign reminds them that although they do things which separate them from God, which God doesn't like, he still forgives them, and that forgiveness is really important to them. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Turn away from your sin, and be faithful to Christ. Unfortunately, we can't do ashing this year because of the pandemic, so what can we do? We thought it'd be a good idea to give people stickers instead, which they could decorate with an ash cross and then put it on themselves or on somebody else in their bubble to remember the day. So we've given out quite a lot of stickers and you might have one with you now that you could use, or you could make your own if you haven't. All you need is a piece of plain paper, cut out a nice circular shape from it, like this. There we go. And get a piece of sticky tape, there we go, and stick it on the back, fold it over so it sticks to the tape and to whatever's on the other side. There we go, like that. So I can wear it like that. So I'm going to put a cross on it now, and you could put on a plain dark cross using a black pen or a pencil if you like, or if you really want to, you could make it a nice colourful cross. 
doesn't really matter. There's mine. I'm going to put one on my homemade sticker as well. And there we go. All ready to use in my own little Ash Wednesday service. Now that we've made our badges, if you'd like to, you could take part in ashing yourself. All you need is a friend who'd also like to do it. And you can swap your badges with each other. As you do them, you might like to say the special words that the minister says in the Ash Wednesday service. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Turn away from your sin, and be faithful to Christ. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Turn away from your sin, and be faithful to Christ. I hope you've enjoyed learning all about Shrove Tuesday, Ash Wednesday and Lent. I've come to the end of my little video now, so all that remains is for me to say a prayer for you as we go. If you're a Christian and you'd like to join in, just say Amen at the end. If not, please just listen. Christ, give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you all, now and always. Amen.